Hello, uh, we are with Artur Runkebetzger, uh, Director of International and Climate Strategy at the European Commission. Uh, we have a few questions for, for him. The first one would be, what's your opinion of these years of European climate policies as a policy maker? Uh, what are the lights? What are the mm. shadows? I think the real light is that uh, Europe's emissions have gone down. Uh, and they have even gone down further than what we had been assuming many, many years ago. So we have over-accomplished our international obligations under the Kyoto's first commitment period. And how things look at the moment, it seems we are going to over-accomplish again until the year 2020. And I think that's the good news of European climate policies. There is a lot of change in behavior. Um, there is innovation happening that is driving down emissions in Europe. So it's good for the climate. The more shadow parts is that, um, of course, we do a lot of learning uh, in our climate policies in Europe. Um, we have seen in the emissions trading prices not being very high, so they were not a real driving force uh, when it comes to innovation. Um, and we had to make adjustments to the legislation uh, in order to make sure that this is effective. In fact, we have many pieces of legislation in Europe um, and we do not really fully understand yet what are the interlinkages, which one is really uh, the most effective one. Uh, the other aspect is, is it done in the cost-efficient manner, yes or no? Uh, and we all know the discussion around uh, renewable energy in Europe um, that has been driven into the market, sometimes at very high prices. So in national governments had to return to change their policies, withdraw their policies, uh, which has upset many investors in Europe. Uh, and that is not good. That is not the way policy making should be done. Uh, you should give clear signals. You should have predictability. You should have certainty. So that's an area where we'll have to work on. Uh, in the context of the energy union uh, in the coming years to become better. What's your impression of the international dimensions of EU climate policy? Has it helped to progress in this area, in other countries, in other areas of the world? Um, I would put a big um, yes with capital letters uh, to that answer. Um, I remember when coming into the international climate negotiations in the late 90s, uh, very often I was confronted uh, with the dilemma uh, developing countries saying, you know, we can either develop our countries and grow our economies and get rid of poverty or we can ki uh, fight climate change. So everybody was thinking of it's an either or. You can either do one thing or you can do the other thing. And what we have proven in Europe is that you can do both. You can grow your economy, uh, Europe's uh, GDP has been growing by 45% since the year 1990 and at the same time our emissions have gone down by almost 20%. Uh, and that decoupling story uh, is something that is um, catching the attention of um, many of our friends in the developing countries and particularly China. China is very interested in how this was done in Europe. Um, so they come now and try to understand what has happened and how was this done and how was this manufactured and what was the role of policy making uh, in this whole exercise. And that is very good. Uh, and I think that will unlock and that has unlocked over the last 10 years um, the situation in the international negotiations. You remember we were kind of in this um, cul de sac called Kyoto. Um, the industrialized countries who had taken commitments, but then many industrialized countries not uh, fulfilling them. The United States ran away, Canada overshoot, um, the Russian Federation, Japan didn't want to continue into a second commitment period. So nobody was coming to the club any longer. Um, but now I think we are needing something that is more inclusive um, and that moves gradually over time to universal participation. We are in late September 2015, mm. so you are back from Bonn as a chief negotiator of the EC. Um, and we have Paris at the end of the year. What should we expect from Paris? An agreement. 
Um, there will be an agreement in Paris, I'm pretty sure. Um, the reason I'm pretty sure is that uh, all the major economies, the G20 countries, are fully behind it, and in particular uh, the United States and also China. Uh, for President Obama, it's a le legacy issue. Um, together with uh, State Secretary Kerry, he is really pushing this agenda internationally. Uh, and I think that is good, um, because all the big ones in the room, the ones who also cause the majority of the emissions, um, they are on the same page. Uh, the big question, of course, is um, how far are we going to get? And I hear in the public um, the first question that is always put towards me is, is it going to be two degrees, yes or no? And I think we have been saying that it's probably not going to be the two degrees that is going to be signed in Paris. We want to have this and continue with that as an objective, yes. But all the actions that have been put onto the table and will be put onto the table by Paris are not going to add up to the two degrees. So the important thing is that this Paris Agreement is dynamic, so it can ratchet up its level of ambition over time. Uh, and move forward. So regular reviews uh, is important. Um, learning from each other is going to be important. Cooperative action among countries is going to be very important. Bringing in civil society, business uh, into the action uh, arena. Uh, these are very important features of a Paris Agreement. And I'm sure we'll get there. Okay, thank you very much. Welcome.